Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. It's time to review our top 10 Aussie muscle car episodes that we've featured on our channel so far. Starting with number 10. This beautiful HQ Jetty S Coupe was once owned by yours truly. Whilst it was one of the smaller 253 V8s, this Survivor was an original gem and drove like an absolute dream. Let's do it! These Monaros came out with various engine options, anything from 6-cylinder to your 253, your good old Aussie 308, and of course the iconic 350 small block Chevy. They are the jewel in the crown, those things, but super duper rare. Number 9. Ray Icahn's Leyland 47V. One of only a handful of prototypes ever built. This was a model that never officially hit the market, in the wake of the Leyland brand pulling out of Australia. I tell you what, it's got some poke, this little engine. And the suspension was quite good too for its day. It had McPherson struts up front, rack and pinion steering, but the thing I liked was that it had the all aluminium 4.4 litre V8. Of course they had a six cylinder option as well, but the V8 was top of the line. We all love a V8, don't we? That's for sure. Number eight. Ron Klein's XU1 V8 Holden Dealer Team Prototype Replica. You ready? Join me. Enjoy the ride. Wow, <laughs> can't believe it. I'm driving the XU2 replica, just like the one that Harry Firth was behind, a prototype car. From what I'm told, Harry Firth said these things handled absolutely fantastic in this configuration. And the powder weight would have been astronomical. Would have been a missile down Conrod Strait. Number seven, Barry McElwain's super rare Dick Johnson Grand Prix Turbo XE Falcon. One of the biggest problems with this car is this. Traction. There isn't any. <laughs> that was just first and second gear and feathering the throttle. This thing has got so much torque from 2000 RPM onwards, you've got no idea. It feels like it's an eight litre engine. And that's the beauty of efficient turbocharging. Now the throttle. 2,500 RPM. Pulls like an absolute bat out of hell. Number six. Mick Swartz's wild DJR V8 supercar powered XR GT Falcon. Living the dream. This, this has got 347 cubic inches of raw power with eight throttle bodies and 600 plus horsepower. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You wanna hear some music? Listen to this. Now that's the sh <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Number five. Ross McConnell's spectacular 302 V8 powered 1973 Bolwell Nagari. Ross actually worked on the assembly line at Bolwell back in the day and restored this example to absolute perfection. Well, isn't this a privilege? Ross has let me drive his 1973 Bolwell Nagari. Wow, I can't believe it. I've been dreaming about these things since I was a kid. I never thought I'd drive one. They didn't even really make that many. Very few exist. 
And here's something you'll find interesting. The actual name Nagari is the Aboriginal meaning for the word to flow. And this car here has got a genuine 30,000 miles on it. And I tell you what, it looks it. You look around the car, the original trim, it is absolutely spectacular. Here in Australia, down under, this was our sports car. And have a look at the thing, it looks absolutely superb. It oozes style and muscle. Number four, Phil Duncan's very angry triple Weber equipped LJXU1 Tirana racer. The induction noise on this beast really got my heart racing. the sound of the symphony of six big trumpets. Dumping in all that fuel, sucking in all that air, those Weber carbs. There's nothing quite like it. It is intoxicating. It sort of sounds like the world's gonna end. It's dramatic. In fact, that's probably the best word for it. Dramatic. And when it comes to the world ending, I do believe that the world would probably end for you if you were the car lined up beside this angry little Tirana. It'd take one mean machine to take this baby on, let me tell ya. Let's slot it back and cough. Hear that music. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Number three, Ron Klein's original A9X hatchback Tirana. The A9X is arguably one of the most iconic muscle cars ever to be built in Australia. Some people say to me, gee, you must love your job. You know what I say to them? Yes. <laughs> Who wouldn't love this? I'm driving an A9X hatchback, the iconic Aussie muscle car. Probably one of the most iconic when it comes to racetrack performance too. Who could forget Peter Brock winning Bathurst by six laps with Jim Richards? And on the very last lap, just to stamp his authority because he could, he just went out and smashed the lap record. What a car. Look, I'm a big fan of the GT HO Phase 3 and U49 Chargers and all those muscle cars. XU1 as well, a little giant killer. But these things, I don't know, for me, they're just about at the top of the tree. Number 2. Les Dolls Extremely Rare Calypso Green RP083 XAGT Falcon Hardtop. Believed to be factory fitted with one of the very few remaining stillborn Phase 4 GTHO engines. I can't believe it. <laughs> what an animal. Let's take this thing for a drive. Sit tight! <laughs> Well, I've got to say, I cannot believe that I am so privileged enough to be driving such a car. Right now, at this very moment, I am driving a car with Phase 4 Heritage. That is extremely rare. This would have to be a one of a kind. Whilst there are RP083 based cars and others out there, to find something so unique like this to have been fitted with such an engine is super, super, super rare. I'll be honest, if I owned it, I probably wouldn't let anyone drive it. So, I feel quite emotional right now. And finally, number one. Dave Gilfoyle's spectacular supercharged big block Chevy powered HQ GDS Coupe. This car was a monster to drive and one of the most incredible builds I have ever seen. Yep, you 
you better believe it, I am driving this beast. 1971 HQ GDS Coupe. Packed full of 502 Chevy Big Block, a 671 blower, and electronic fuel injection. What an animal this thing is. Can't believe it, how lucky am I? This thing makes about 800 horsepower. And get this, it's on a soft tune. It runs about seven and a half to one compression, which is quite low. It's running nine pound of boost. This thing will handle a heap more boost. It probably make well over a thousand horsepower with its full blown tune. The thing is absolutely unbelievable. You just walk in the throttle, and it just accelerates like a gun. Unbelievable. You've got to be careful, obviously, on the street. I'd love to get this thing on the strip, but I can still feel that power underneath my foot. Absolutely amazing. You can find the full episodes on our channel. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because it's your valued support that helps us keep this show on the road.